Chapter 16 Gondama Raju departs Gondama Raju the grandfather of this body used to come all the way from the village to Prashanti Mandir by walk every morning and evening to have my darshan one day i asked him why do you take so much trouble to come here and go back every day twice you remain in your own place i will myself come there to see you kondamaraju felt a little embarrassed he said ayyo swami is it proper on my part to make you visit me patting his cheeks apologetically he continued no no swami i will myself come to the mandir to have swami's darshan this will be a good exercise for me he also said i am repeating your own words told to me earlier he was referring to swami's reply to him when he proposed that swami might take lunch in the bukapatnam school itself instead of rushing to puttaparthi and again going back during the lunch hour he was 112 years old even at that advanced age he had his eyes ears legs and hands in good condition he was able to come on foot from the old mandir to the new mandir even without the support of a walking stick i used to warn him saying there may be cattle coming in your way why don't you bring one stick along with you he would then reply why do i need a stick swami my god given legs are in good condition he had great devotion towards swami he used to say swami you are god verily no one except you and i know this truth i used to take pan regularly in those days right from early morning till i went to bed i kept chewing betel leaves and nut with a little lime added to it he also had the same habit one day i informed him i have kept the betel leaves nut powder and lime there he protested saying swami why do i need powdered nut i am not an old person so saying he took the betel leaves and nuts and chewed them making a crackling sound his teeth were so strong even in that advanced age his vision was in good condition he could walk with ease any distance the old people in those days used to be so strong what could be the reason they used to make proper use of their body and senses they lived with a purpose i must perform my duty having been born as a human being gondama raju used to come to the prashanti mandir early in the morning i used to sleep on the sand in front of the mandir since i knew that he was coming to have my darshan i used to cover myself with a bed sheet fully covering my face also that was to give the impression that i was asleep he would then slowly lift the bed sheet over my feet do pad namaskar prostrations to my feet and quietly leave that place lest someone might think that this elderly gentleman of ripe old age was prostrating before his grandson who was very young the moment he left i used to get up one can wake up a person fast asleep how can one wake up the one that pretends to sleep why delay o krishna enough enough of your pranks so sang the gopikas about lord krishna in the dwapara yuga once gondamaraju asked me swami how long will i live when will i leave this body i told him that i would give him my darshan before he departed from this world he was a good singer if he started singing about lakshmana falling unconscious in the rama ravana war the entire village would flock around him one evening i went to the village of puttaparthi he was at that time sitting on a cot and singing some songs the moment he noticed me he got down from the cot and fell at my feet exclaiming swami you have come unable to control his joy he pleaded with me swami you are not an ordinary child i know you are verily lord ishvara you have taken birth in our lineage in order to help us cross the ocean of samsara i have a small desire 
Way back in Treta Yuga, King Dasharatha desired to leave his mortal coil after taking a few drops of sanctified water from the hands of Sri Rama. But he could not get his wish fulfilled. On the other hand, it was Jatayu, the bird who fought with Ravana when he was abducting Sita, who could get this prapti, blessing. I sincerely pray to you to kindly shower such blessings on me also. Before I leave this body, you must pour a few drops of water into my mouth with your divine hands. I gave him word that it would happen accordingly. Kondamaraju had a great liking for obatlu, a kind of sweet pancake. On the day before he died, he requested Ishwarama, his daughter-in-law, to prepare them. Accordingly, she prepared some obatlu and gave me also a few of them. I told her, I will not take sweets. Kondamaraju insisted that I should take at least one obatlu. He prayed, Swami, my end is nearing. This body is 112 years old. Before I leave this body, I must put a piece of this preparation in your mouth with my own hands. People say, Yashoda fed child Krishna with her own hands. Kausalya fed child Rama with her own hands and so on. Today, I think I too have that good fortune. Hence, please permit me to put a piece of this sweet meat in your mouth with my hands. He, in fact, put one piece. And lo, surprisingly, it was neither in my mouth nor in his hands. Ishwaramma, who was observing the scene, asked Kondamaraju, O father-in-law, where did you lose that piece of a battu? He replied, Can anyone describe fully the divine pranks of Swami? They are not one or two. They are infinite. I had a Morris Tourer, a small car, in those days which I used to drive myself. I used to go around in that car, not only in this village, but to far-off places like Madras. When I was driving that car fast, people standing on the roadside used to wonder at my speed. One day, Kondamaraju called Ishwarama and said, See where the Swami is coming towards the Satyabhama temple. Ishwarama came out and confirmed, Yes, Swami is coming in his car. Kondamaraju then told her, Ishwarama, my end is nearing. I will be no more. That is why God is coming here to keep his word. Poor lady, Ishwarama inquired innocently in the worldly sense, What? Father-in-law, where is God? How does he come? Kondamaraju then pointed towards me and said, You innocent woman! Are you still under the illusion that Satya is your son? Look, God is coming. Ishwarama also knew about my divinity. She had also witnessed the superhuman powers of Swami several times. Yet, she was deluded to think that I was her young Satya out of her motherly love. Yashoda was also like that. In spite of witnessing the fourteen lokas, worlds, in the mouth of Krishna, she wondered whether it was a dream or an illusion created by Lord Vishnu. Kondamaraju then called Ishwaramma and said, Ishwaramma, God himself is coming to take me away with him. He is coming here to keep his word given to me long ago. Please bring some water in a tumbler. He will pour a few drops into my mouth. Then I will depart from this world peacefully. Ishwarama inquired, You neither have fever nor any other disease. You are hale and healthy. How do you say you will die peacefully? Kondamaraju replied, Death knows no reason or season. It will happen according to God's will. Therefore, please bring some water. Ishwarama then brought some water in a tumbler as requested by him, since she did not like to enter into an argument with him. Kondamaraju asked her to put a basil leaf in that water. He knew fully well that Swami was coming there only to see him off. That was a fact known 
only to two people, Swami and himself. He was waiting for my arrival, holding the tumbler in his hand. As soon as I arrived there, he said, Swami, I am ready. I told him, I am also ready. Kondamaraju sat down on the floor and asked me to sit on the cot. He put his head on my knees and prayed, Swami, I have a submission. Kindly listen. Ishwarama was listening to our conversation. She was wondering, What a strange sight! How this elderly gentleman is giving so much respect to his young grandson. But she kept her thoughts to herself. Kondamaraju expressed his feelings thus, Swami, you came here today to fulfill your promise given to me some twenty years ago. The sky may break and fall down, the seas may go dry, but your promise will never go waste. I just smiled at his words. He then requested me, Swami, please do not divert my thoughts with your enchanting smile. Take this glass and drink a portion of the water therein and pour the rest into my mouth with your divine hands. He also said, King Dasharatha had four sons after performing the Putrakameshti Yaga, a sacrificial ritual performed to beget a son. Lord Narayana himself was born to him as Sri Rama and Adisesha, the serpent upon whose coils Lord Narayana reclined as Lakshmana and his conch and wheel as Bharata and Shatrugna. In spite of begetting such great sons, none of them was available by the side of King Dashrata to pour a few drops of water in his mouth during his last moments. Swami, you are born in our Ratnakara lineage. It is our great fortune that the Lord Himself took birth in our lineage in the Bharadvaja Gotra and Apastamba Sutra. Please, therefore, fulfill my last request. Let me not die with disappointment like Dashratha. He prayed thus. I told him, I came here exactly for that purpose. So saying, I lifted the tumbler and was about to pour the water into Kondama Raju's mouth. He protested, No, no Swami, you please drink the water first and then pour the rest into my mouth. Accordingly, I drank a little water from the tumbler and thereafter poured the rest into his mouth. Kondama Raju felt immensely happy and contended. He could not contain his feelings. He said, Swami, what a great fortune it is to drink water from your divine hands and then leave this world. Not all people can get this good fortune. Even a person of the stature of King Dasharatha could not get this unique opportunity. But I could get it. I am so fortunate. My life has become sanctified. Expressing his feelings thus, he breathed his last, with lasting smile on his face. Thus, all the members of that family died peacefully and effortlessly. Their lives are a perfect example of the adage that good begets good. Because of their noble feelings, everything in their life went on smoothly and ultimately they attained a noble and sacred end. I would advise that you may also constantly contemplate God till your last breath in keeping with the saying Sarvada Sarvakaleshu Sarvatra Hari Chintanam Everywhere, at all times and under all circumstances contemplate on God. When you do this, you will also attain a noble end when time comes. Kondamaraju used to run a small pound shop where sundry articles like beedis country cigars, beetle leaves and beetle nuts were sold. Before he died, one day he called on me and gave me some money and requested, Swami, I never did any injustice to anybody, nor did I ever deceive anybody, but it is possible that I might have forgotten to return an anna or a paisa to somebody by mistake. Since you have chosen to incarnate in our Ratnakara lineage, our entire lineage is sanctified. I do not want to die in debt to someone. 
Please, therefore, arrange to convert this money into small coins and scatter them on my dead body during my funeral procession. By so doing, I will be redeemed of any debt that might still be remaining. I asked him, Why should you have to give me money for that purpose? I can get it done with the money available with me. But he insisted, No, Swami, my debt has to be cleared with my own money. Thus, all the members of that family were men of great integrity. It was only because of their virtue they could win the grace of God. God's grace is the only wealth that a man should aspire for. If only that grace is available, everything else will automatically follow. <laughs>